Hello world and welcome to Geek for Geeks. In this video, we are going to be talking about arrays in Go programming language. I hope you are excited, so let's get started. So far, we have only had to store single values, but it's much more common in computing to need to store an entire list of values, like items on a grocery list or phone numbers in a contact list. Go has a couple of different structures that can do this. These are arrays and slices. Just a quick note, slices are used more commonly than array for reasons we'll discuss shortly. However, since slices are built on top of arrays, it's essential to understand how arrays work. So we'll look at arrays first and in the upcoming video, we'll look at slices. An array consists of a list of elements. An array type is written with a number here in the square brackets followed by a type name. The number represents the size of the array and the type is the type of element that the array can hold. All of the elements in an array need to be of the same type. So for example, you can't assign a number to this array of strings. You can assign to an element of an array by including the variable that holds the array, followed by square brackets within the numeric index of the element you want to assign to it. Zero is the first element. 1 is the second element and so on. You can assign to the element using the equal sign just like you would with any other variable. Moreover, you can access the value that you have stored in that element just by putting the variable name that holds the array followed by the square brackets within the element index. So, for example, we assign the string April, May and June to the months array here. And then we print them out down here one at a time, April, May and June. You can see that in the output down here at the bottom. The same thing for the sales by month. We assign float64 value to the first, second and the third elements of the sales by month array and then we print them out at a time down here at the bottom. If you know what the contents of an array are going to be beforehand, you may find it more convenient to populate it using the array literal. You do that by putting the values the array is going to hold here in the curly braces following the array declaration. So this code here has the same code as the lengthy previous code you saw a while back. It assigns the values April, May and June to the array months and then several float64 values to the sales by month array. You can get the length of an array by using the built-in len function short for length. So, we could use a single print line statement within a loop to print out the entire contents of the months and sales by month array. We will start at the index 0 and will continue looping while the value of i is less than the length of the months array. For our post statement, we will increment the index variable and then we will create a single fmt dot print line statement which prints the values from months at the current index and the value for sales by month at the current index. Save that, run it and we'll see the same result. The form of the for loop within the init condition and the post statement is pretty tough. Suppose we accidentally change the condition to i less than or equal to the length of months. Well, the length of months array is 3. But if we try to use an index of 3 that's out of bound for an array. Let's try running it like this and you'll see we get an error saying that index we tried is out of range. This is why Go offers another form of for loop. We declare i and months variable and say that they'll be receiving values from the range months. We provide the name for an array here. Use the range keyword and we specify the name of variable that we be receiving and the current index of the current value and the value itself. This will loop over an array, assigning the index and the value for each value the array contains. So down here in the print line statement, we can, instead of saying months at the current index, we can just put the months variable instead. And then we get to access the sales by month array at the current index since those values correspond to the month's name. Save it. And you'll see that we get the same output as before. You will find this form is generally much safer and less error prone than using indexes to loop over the values in an array. If you don't need either the index or the value, you can omit them using a blank identifier. 
So for example, if we didn't need them, we could omit the index by using the blank identifier here. There we go. We have just the names of the months now, April, May and June. Moving on, the length of the array is fixed. They can't grow or shrink. For example, if we were to try to add a fourth string to the months array, let's say that month index 3 is equal to July, try saving that and running it. We get invalid array index 3. This limitation is the main reason arrays are rarely used directly in Go programs. It's often essential to be able to add a new values onto the list after its creation. This is why Go provides an easy to use alternative to arrays that is slices. That we will cover in the next video. This is the end of the video guys. If you like the video, drop a like and leave a comment. See you in the next video. Happy coding until then.